I'm starting a cake business, again, in a new location. Let's address the elephant in the room, our new home. I am so thankful and blessed to be in a new home creating new memories. I literally would not be here without all of you who support me and my family in many different ways. So thank you. I can't wait to show you around our new space and to create new tutorials and new content just for you. Here's what I'm gonna do to get my cake business started, again. So first and foremost, we're gonna start with the legalities. We're gonna make sure that the business is running and operating legally. Now, you do you, okay? You do you. But as for me and mine, we trying to be legal, okay? Okay. Okay. So first off, I want to check the requirements for my state. Of course, I already know this because I have done this before. The only requirements that we have is to have a food handler's certificate. So I'm going to reapply for my food handler certificate. Now this food handler's permit is like super cheap, like $10. If that's one of your requirements, just do it. What is $10? Okay, you, you can do it. $10, an investment for your business to be following the rules and the law. Okay, but again, that's your business. That's your business. But I will also get some additional protection by getting food liability insurance. I will be using a program called FLIP. That's what I've used in the past. So I am going to reinstate liability insurance. And then there's also another optional legality that you can do, which is to get a serve safe cert certification. That does cost a little bit more to do, but and it's not required for some states like mine, but it is something that's nice to have. So you can have that extra knowledge to make sure that you're operating in a good and clean way for your business. So legalities, food handlers, permits, food liability insurance, and serve safe certification, which is optional. Double check your state's requirements. This is just what is required and optional for me and my state. Oh, and also depending on where you are in your business, you can consider getting an LLC for your business, a business bank account, all the good stuff. This is my second time around. Well, it's probably been more than two times, but I've already done this before. So I already have all of those things set and in place already. I'm just going to be picking up where I left off, but always consult an accountant because I'm not an accountant. Okay. I'm not some financial advisor. I'm not a professional. I am just a person who is sharing their experience with you. Okay. So do what you need to do to get it right. So after I get all of the legal stuff out of the way, I then went ahead and started to learn my area and I'm still learning my area. Right, so I'm doing research on the area and the people that I wish to serve. In this research process, I have gone through and I have researched the local makers in my area. I've looked up cookie shops, I've looked up cake shops, home bakeries, home cookiers, all of that good stuff just to see who is already out here in my area and also to do a little snooping to see what are they doing? Is it, have they been successful? If so, what has been successful about it? Have they not been successful? Oof. If so, why have they not been successful? What do they do? Do they sell cookies? Do they offer classes? Do they sell cakes? Do they do treats? And the reason why I'm doing this is to learn what people like, but also to learn what can I do to set myself apart from these people? Where are the gaps that are being missed in this area that I can wiggle my way through and capitalize on? I'm also looking at how do they market? When they make their posts, what kind of engagement are they getting? What forms of marketing are they doing? Is it word of mouth? Am I seeing signs out? Are they connecting with local businesses? Are they running ads? Are they on social media? What social medias are they on? What are they doing on these social media platforms? So I'm taking in all of this knowledge to learn about my competitors and to analyze them and then take away things for where my business can stand out even more. If someone is already doing what you intend to do, don't let that be a hindrance to you. Take that as a moment to be able to learn and do research because there are so many different things that you can offer. People love different personalities. People love different styles. So there's always room for you. You just have to find where that room is, right? And then insert yourself into it. I'm also looking at how they're connecting with the community. Who are their target clients? Who are they seeking to serve? Who's commenting? Who's responding? What type of people are looking for these kind of services? I'm also taking notes for myself. I'm looking at my area. I'm learning the people who live here. I'm looking around to see what businesses are out here. Now, I'm not out here trying to serve everybody. I'm using all of this information to formulate who my ideal client would be in this particular community. So I wanna be solid in my neighborhood and in my area. This is much different than how I did it the last time that I was running my home bakery, 
where I was open to the entire city and all the surrounding cities. This time around, my focus is on my specific neighborhood and the surrounding neighborhoods. Like, I'm the go-to person, you know? The plan for the structure of my business is to mimic that of a storefront bakery except for my home. So this kind of looks like having everyday grab and go items that are available throughout the week. And they also come with a more affordable price since I plan to make them in bulk to serve more people versus doing it on a onesie twosie custom basis. I plan to also include something like preset sales. If you've seen my previous video on ways to make money as a home baker, then I mentioned this in that video, but having preset sales, I get to choose the design and the theme that I like, and then I sell it from there. And as far as custom cakes, I will still be doing those, but those won't be my main focus. So my goal is to implement those on an occasional basis. I want people to be able to have my products and have them quick and whenever they want them. And in the scheme of what exactly I plan to sell, I do have a running list of ideas, but quick items like the mini loaf pans or cake slices, mini sheet cakes, items like that, that won't really take a lot of time for me to make and still be able to turn a good profit on them. Because again, I want my products to be ready to go into the hands of potential customers as they want. Mimicking the availability of a storefront bakery. If you're interested to see an actual comprehensive list of what I'm actually going to be selling, then be sure that you turn on your notifications and subscribe to my channel because I'll be sharing a video with you breaking down what's gonna be on my menu and how I'm gonna be setting up my website. So stay tuned. So now on to my business plan. How am I going to implement this whole strategy and structure that I desire for my cake business? Well, because I am in a new community, one of the first things that I plan to do is to reach the workers in my community. Every day there are food trucks that come around here that sell to the workers on their lunch breaks. So why not jump on that same bandwagon and thank and show appreciation to those workers who are here in the community working so hard to build up these beautiful homes. So I plan to implement a strategy on how I'm going to sell to the workers. And again, this is going to help me with that daily, that daily availability that I desire for the structure of my cake business. So that's step one. But also I plan to reach out because we're one of the first ones into our community. So as my neighbors move in, I also plan to one, welcome them into the community because you know, I'm looking for friends. I'm trying to build and grow, you know, and live the life of my dreams here in this community. So one, when I go over to introduce myself, I plan to have a few baked goods that I am going to give to them for free as a welcome to the neighborhood kind of deal. Because again, I want to be solidified in my area and known as that go-to person. And the best way to do that is to build community and connections with people. And what better way than to bond over us all moving into this new community and becoming neighbors. So I plan to drop off baked goods to all of my neighbors as they move in, of course, with my information on it so they know that, hey, when you are ready to celebrate and have your house warming, I'm your girl. When you're ready to celebrate your birthday, your kid's birthday, I'm your girl. I'm so excited for my plan. Like, I'm so proud of me. I, I am so proud of me <laughs> for thinking of this. And, you know, it's really getting outside of the box, getting outside of that norm to be a standout in what I do. Also to reach the sales office and to connect with them, if not just to do a corporate order for the builders community, right? So when they have their event, then I can be that go-to person for them to come and get their sweets and their goods, you know? And like, I really can't believe, I mean, I can't believe because this is just what I do, but I can't believe like I'm giving y'all literally all of my information. I'm literally telling y'all the step-by-step -step breakdown of exactly what I am getting ready to do to run my cake business. Like, you know what? Just, just take a moment right here and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Hit that like button, share it out to your baking friends, share it out to your family, share it out, I don't care, share it to yourself. Just hit that share button and get my video going and get it out there. Leave a comment below letting me know what you think about my plans so far. Have you ever thought of this? Have you seen anybody else implementing these things or sharing this with you? I wanna know it all. I wanna know everything, so drop it in the comments below. I will be so, so truly thrilled and grateful for any kind of engagement that you give me in this video, so. 
Yeah, let's do that, okay? <laughs> of course, I plan to attend markets and fairs to get outside of my neighborhood and to connect with those communities. But another way that I want to get connected in the community is with the schools, particularly the school that my that my daughters will be attending this year. I, I haven't done my research on this and I don't quite know what the parameters or the qualifications are for the schools. And my target is not necessarily intended for the students, but more so the faculty and the staff. All of the things that I'm doing are things that are natural to me, are things that I have the natural connections and reach to do. So I was a teacher before I had my daughters. And so being a part of the school system is something that I greatly want to do, especially if my kids are going to be in there. I want to be up there front and center in all the business and all the things, right? Being active in that community so in doing so i also want to bring my business along to be able to one bless the teachers but also make a connection to be a part of their everyday events to be their go-to person in their personal lives right and then hopefully to connect with some of the parents and get on their radar for their kids birthdays as well none of this is fully worked out yet it's just what's in my head what i'm about to do right okay i also want to get outside of my comfort zone by connecting with local businesses again this whole thing is about building community and even outside of my business that is just my goal and why i chose to move here is because i am so desperately in need of community for me and my family so another way that i'm going to do that is hopefully to get out and to be brave because y'all i am very like i'm actually very shy and like well it depends on the situation okay it depends on the situation <laughs> but yes like this this is one of those situations where i'm shy at and maybe it's to host classes maybe it's to you know do a pop-up maybe it's again corporate orders there's an event center here there is a gym there's an athletic program there's all these different things that are literally right here around my corner and again it just fits into my whole field and spiel about connecting to those who are directly around me. The last few things on the tail end of this that I plan to do is of course to start running ads on Facebook. I'm not knowledgeable in this area, so to say, but I'm pretty sure that I can figure it out. And then I also plan to set up a Google My Business account. So when people are searching on Google for a baker, I am the one who pops up. And then I also plan to implement some kind of membership type system and i have a pretty cool idea for that as well i hope that i'm making sense because y'all like i'm literally just talking to y'all off the top of my head like i have my notes here on my phone but i'm literally just going off the top of the dome so after i've done all of the mental work behind my business and getting the plan set up knowing my structure knowing who i'm trying to reach researching my area all of those things next up is setting up a website choosing payment process creating my contracts so i do personally use square as my form of payment processing and i did use that previously as my website but i am considering going another route and using another website that i use for my online the station bakery business so i am still in the process of figuring out how i am going to weigh those two and how i want my website to be set up for customers Customers to be able to reach me um, but one of the things that you do need to consider is some form of a website some form of a payment processing system and getting your contracts and other paperwork in line to make the process for your customers to be as easy and seamless as possible for your customers and for yourself as well be sure that you stay tuned because I am going to be walking you through and showing you everything that I am doing to start my cake business so be sure to hit the notifications Subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment to let me know what is the number one thing that you really, really, really want to see from me. And yes, of course, we are going to talk pricing, okay? <laughs> I know that this may sound like a lot, but I promise you, I'm not trying to do too much, which is why I'm choosing this new structure for my cake business. So we'll see how it goes. I know that it's a new idea, but I'm pretty confident that I will be able to implement it and execute it if I stick through it. I just have a love for business. I love the intricacies, the ins and outs of planning and strategizing and implementing different things to make my business go, which is why I love to talk about it so much and share it with you because I know a lot of you are not on that side of running your cake business, right? A lot of you don't like the business side. So I'm happy that I am able to have this insight and just share with you my thoughts on it so you can pick and choose what works for you and then run with it. I love getting and seeing messages of people who are like, man, I just watched one of your videos and I was able to do X amount in sales just from that video. Like I love seeing those and hearing those testimonies from people on my content because it gives me that validation that like hey maybe i do know a little bit of what i'm talking about maybe i do maybe it's not just good for me but this can actually translate over for other people 
if they stick with it and if they implement what I am sharing with them and adjusting it to fit their particular business. Because that's truly the key, knowing how to take the information that you receive and then shift it and form it and mold it to fit your style of business is what's going to set you apart and make you successful not taking something and then just directly picking it up and sitting it on top of your business. You have to know who you're serving, who you are, what you are able to do within the realm of the information that you receive. So always keep that in mind, okay? I am excited and I know, I feel like I know what I'm doing, but I am fearful of the what ifs. Like, what if it doesn't work? Or like, what if I can't connect with the people in my area? And what if I just end up not wanting to continue and I just decide to stop again? All of those are huge major fears of mine. But I know on the other side of those what ifs is another set of what ifs. What if it does work? What if I can connect with my community? What if I do persevere and keep going? What will happen? Either way though, I'm still going to jump out there and give it my all and give it my best to see where this thing lands me. And if nothing else, I've given you a ton of ideas to implement and use in your business so you can be successful. <laughs> So I would love for you to join me on this journey and let's see where this thing goes. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Like, subscribe, comment, share. <laughs> oh man. Hey, that hit though. That hit.